fellas. Got a new quick assembly design here I'm testing out. I've noticed right off the bat that I'm gonna have to go with the thicker metal on the bottom. Got a little bit of a flims action to it. We're gonna be testing this nozzle on some dirty diesel fuel. It's got a lot of oil in it and stuff like that. But that'll help us see the flame. We do have a forward facing wind. So I don't know how that's gonna work out for us, but uh, we're gonna give this a shot. See how this works out. And it's actually pretty incredible. Okay, this little clip here is for the hardcore engineer, man. We got some reverse flow in the combustion chamber, and I love it. See that flame towards the lip? It is actually traveling in the opposite direction of the discharge flame. You can't see it as good as I can off camera, but we have an annular fireball with reverse flow. And that is responsible for some of the flame stabilities we're seeing up towards the higher spectrum of the operating range of this thing. I can tell right now that the diameter of this combustion chamber is just too big for the lower lean burns that you want for them high temp operations. We're never going to get this thing glowing hot like we can the other combustors. We're going to have to do a 22 caliber version. Okay, so check this out, fellas. This thing does have an incredible inner cone burning inside of this thing. I've never seen such a hot inner fireball that looks like this. It's burning blue, even though it's mostly waste oil and you usually can't do that with waste oil. There is uh, quite the event taking place inside of this thing. Definitely not characteristic of any of the other combustion chambers I've done. Very strange doesn't work so good on these lower ends. We can't add any more oxygen to this or else it'll go out on us. So it's not good for um, low end, high temp operation. Well. However, if you need a burner that will dry out a couple of tons of sand in a couple of minutes or boil a few thousand gallons of water or some type of product that needs distillation, maybe you're running a tired of fuel operation and you need some good pyrolyzer burners. This thing right here is ready to roll. No blowers or pumps needed, just needs an air compressor to run it. And uh, you're looking at some pretty incredible outputs. The um, plumbing on this nozzle is just set up for extremely high output. So that's what we're gonna focus on with the 45 caliber and up. I'm gonna be doing some other versions of this thing where we've got, you know, 22 caliber, 22 long, 22 short, and a 50 cal. So we're definitely going to have to do a diesel fuel test on this bad boy. Essentially what we observed here is the lower end turn down spectrum wasn't all that great. It had some pretty strange flame characteristics. It did work pretty stable. It did have some, some good stability and all that. However, in the upper end, the high end output, this thing is the most stable combustion chamber I've ever seen. I would imagine that was every bit of 500 kilowatt. Um, the stability I observed inside of this combustion chamber at them higher operating rates was phenomenal. It was a perfect blue inner cone burning, super hot. So uh, definitely worth uh, further evaluation. Whether or not the length is right, we're going to figure that out. We'll make some different lengths. We'll go shorter and longer. But for the most part, for high output, that is the most stable, full-blown output on these valves I've ever seen on this nozzle. And that was the 5-inch bullet burner. Definitely quick to fabricate. I'll probably be able to sell this thing for about 75 bucks versus 100 to 150 on the other designs. 
but uh, we'll see where this goes. I'm going to be getting some 310 stainless steel, some hard to find stuff so that this piece will never burn out.